I'm about to commit the motive fallacy here, but uh, bear with me. Let's say for the sake of this discussion that there are those of us who want our consciousness to be a function of science or scientifically explainable phenomena, um, and there are those of us who want our consciousness to be um, either science plus or something other than science, other than scientifically explainable phenomena. Let's say that there's two groups there. Um, exactly how much would this taint any um, discussion or exploration of the ultimate nature of consciousness? Um, in other words, are we all looking to find something that we hope to be true? <laughs> um, and again, I know that um, <clears throat> this seems to be heading in the direction of solipsism, but it's not. Because if I want <laughs> my consciousness to be scientifically explainable or um, explainable or verifiable, whatever in terms of scientific phenomena, then there's a desire there for me to actually be something. There's a will there. If I want my consciousness to be not scientifically explainable or um, something explainable in terms of science and something else, then there's a will there too. So it's still not solipsism. Um, and is there really any way of escaping that? That sort of motive fallacy, which is possibly inherent in all of us. Um, do we want reality to be a certain way? And an interesting little add-on there is why would we want things to be a certain way? What is it that causes a person um, who wants us to think when you die, lights out, end of story, and others who want to think that when we die, uh, something continues to take place, whatever it is. Why do we want to hold these views? That's the motive fallacy that I alluded to, again, but I think we can only answer that, that final little question intuitively. Why do I want to either go lights out when I die, or why do I want something to live on? Um, it's an interesting question, and I think it's utterly fundamental. <laughs> Thank you.